Glory. Amen. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Grab your pen, your Bible, and your notebook. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 16 to 18. We are looking at being filled with the Spirit. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Next verse. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein it's excess. But be filled with the Spirit. But be filled with the Spirit. That's an instruction, not an advice. Be filled. You be filled with the Spirit. The day you got born again, you were born of the Spirit. That new birth is the baptism of the Spirit. You receive the Spirit at new birth. When you got born again, you were born of the Spirit. You were born of the Word. So the Spirit of God is the nature of the reborn believer. The reborn man has a nature called the Spirit of God. Look at the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Which is given unto us. Shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us talking about the work of redemption and the grace of god is what god did to us in jesus christ the grace of god is what god did to us in jesus christ you know the bible says we know the grace of our lord jesus how that he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty may be rich the grace there is that jesus gave up himself for all of us the grace of God is that God gave to us. Grace is not accumulation. Grace means I deprive myself to make the other party better. So when we say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are talking about the sacrificial work of Christ that was to our benefit. The sacrificial work of Christ that was to our benefit. The grace that was given to us in God is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 verse 3 and 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he explains what he's saying in verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that is the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So water is symbolic of the spirit. The believer is born of the spirit. So water explains the spirit. When you are born of the spirit, you are born of the life of God. Because you are already a carrier of his nature. You are already a carrier of his spirit. A carrier of his spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6 says, Know ye not that your body is a house, the residence, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body houses the Holy Spirit. So right now, if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Every born again believer has the Holy Spirit. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, except you are not born again. To be born again means you house the Holy Spirit. To be born again means the Holy Spirit lives in you because you can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. Look at Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration. That is renewing of the Holy Ghost. The washing of regeneration. So you are saved by the washing of regeneration. That is the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And that is what the water was symbolizing in John chapter 3. The washing. Or the purification that you experience by virtue of the Holy Ghost taking up residence on your inside. Look at Ezekiel 36.25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. That was the prophetic promise concerning the indwelling of the spirit in the believer. Which became a reality in the New Testament. That was the prophecy of the prophet concerning the indwelling of the spirit. Which was going to be a New Testament reality. 
a New Testament reality. Please, that's very, very important. So, that cleansing is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not wait for you to wash yourself, then he comes in. No, he comes into you, and by virtue of him coming in, he cleanses you. So, the cleansing is the indwelling of the Spirit. The washing is because the Holy Ghost now lives on your inside. So because the Holy Ghost lives on your inside, you are cleansed. You are washed. The Holy Spirit living in you is your washing and your cleansing. It's not like God, you know, waited for you to be clean first. Then the Spirit will come in. So by putting his Spirit in you, he cleaned you up. By putting his Spirit in you, he cleaned you up. The one who cleanses is the Spirit. How does he do that? He cleanses you by coming to live in you. The Holy Ghost cleanses you by coming to live in you. From the minute the Holy Spirit lives in you, you are now a holy temple. You are now a holy temple. Remember Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Your body is already holy and acceptable unto God. Why? By virtue of the spirit indwelling you. The spirit of God in you qualifies you to be acceptable before God. The spirit of God indwelling the believer. The man that is born again has experienced the indwelling of the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you which you have of god and you are not your own next verse for you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god now, so your body belongs to God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives there. The proof that your body is God's property is because of the indwelling of the Spirit. The proof that the Spirit of God dwells in you is because you have believed the gospel. The moment you believe the gospel, the Holy Ghost takes up residence on your inside. That is what we call the regeneration or that is what we call the washing of water by the word. So you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. You cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. A Christian asking for the Holy Spirit is either confused or is in a fantasy island. A Christian does not ask for the Holy Spirit. The reason why you are a Christian is because you already have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is already indwelling you. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Next verse. But you are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. Why? If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now. If any man have not the spirit of Christ. He is none of his. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're not a believer. You're not born again. You're not a Christian. <laughs> so you need to be born again. That means being born again is having the Holy Spirit. So believers don't ask for the Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. You are an unbeliever. You are an unbeliever. So you need to believe so that the Holy Spirit can come in. The Holy Spirit doesn't come to the believer. Why? He lives in the believer. We don't ask for fresh Holy Ghost. We don't ask for new Holy Spirit. We don't ask for do something new in my life. The newest thing God has done is that you are born of God. A new creation. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Look at that verse 10 of Romans chapter 8. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Next verse. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Look at the next verse. Therefore, brethren, 
we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh verse 13 for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live next verse for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god so who are sons of god who are sons of god those that are led by the spirit look at verse 15 and 16 of that romans chapter 8 for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the, the spirit of adoption received received you're not going to receive you have already received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father so the spirit of god is the spirit of christ is the spirit of adoption is the same he is called the spirit of god or he is called the spirit of christ or he is called the spirit of adoption is the same it's just context that makes the usage of that different as god spirit of adoption spirit of christ look at galatians chapter 4 verse 4 but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law verse 5 to redeem them that were under the law why that we might receive the adoption of sons we are redeemed from the law to receive the adoptions of sons and because you are sons god had set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father crying abba father so you are never told to pray or ask for the holy spirit a believer is never told to pray or ask for the holy spirit god gives the holy spirit without you asking god already gave the holy spirit before you asked you are not the one to ask for the spirit the spirit is god's gift to us upon the resurrection of jesus so the spirit has been given all you are required to do is to receive that's why paul will say to the people in ephesus in acts 19 have you received the holy ghost not have you asked for have you received the holy ghost since you believed see that not that have you asked for because you're supposed to receive the holy ghost is what god has already given so when you receive the gospel you received the holy spirit only one person prays for the holy ghost his name is jesus he said i will ask the father and he will give you another comforter is that true so only jesus prays for the holy spirit i will ask jesus said i jesus will ask the father and because of my asking, the father will give you another comforter so in response to jesus's prayer the father has given us the spirit what is our responsibility to receive how do we receive by believing the gospel of his resurrection so upon receiving the gospel of his resurrection what did we receive we received the holy ghost all right now why do you receive you receive because he has been given already you receive because he has been given. Look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So the spirit is received by the hearing of faith. What faith? The word of faith which we preach. So when we preach the word of faith and you receive. Receiving the word of faith is receiving the Holy Ghost. Receiving the word of faith is receiving the holy ghost very important by the message of faith by the hearing of faith by the message of the gospel you receive the holy ghost by the message of faith by the hearing of faith by the message of the gospel you receive the holy spirit in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 as it is written in the old testament i had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Of course, I've done the correction for you. Is them that he loves. Them whom he loves. Because it's about him loving you. Next verse. But God hath, hath, hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, 
the deep things of God. Meaning that scripture has now been fulfilled. What their eyes didn't see has now been revealed to us by the spirit given to us upon his resurrection. Look at the next verse, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. 12. Now, we have received, we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we have received the spirit which is of God that we may know the things that are freely given to us. So every believer has the Holy Spirit because you are born again. To be born again and not to have the Holy Spirit means you are not born again. It's like saying someone's son does not have his DNA. <laughs> uh -huh. To be born again and say you don't have the Holy Spirit is like saying your father gave birth to you and when they check the DNA he is not your father. Because the spirit of God is the DNA of the believer. Is the nature. Yeah. The nature of the born again man is the spirit of God. That's our DNA. That's our nature. The Holy Ghost is the gene of the believer. That's our gene. The spirit of God is the life of God that we have today. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 10 said, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life. The spirit is life because of righteousness. So there are two things. Number one, if you look at the two prophecies, the first one is Ezekiel 36, which relates with the nature, the nature of the believer. I will give you a new heart. I will take from you the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh i will sprinkle upon you water and clean you that is the nature because the heart relates with nature what is the nature of the believer the spirit the spirit so the nature of the believer is the spirit of god my nature so when i speak in tongues it's natural it is supernatural for the unbeliever. But for the believer, it is natural. When I heal the sick, it is natural. For the unbeliever, it is supernatural. For the believer, that is my nature. That is the constitution of my make. The miraculous. Miracles don't happen to me. Uh -uh. I am a walking miracle. My embodiment is the miraculous. Oh yeah, that, that. That's why the wind blow it where it listed. You can't tell where it's coming from. You can't tell where it's going to. So is everyone that is born of God. Your nature is the Holy Ghost. That is why you don't try to be spiritual. You are spiritual. <laughs> Even when you are laughing, you are spiritual. Even when you are eating, you are spiritual. You don't have to, you don't have to put up a religious face for you to be spiritual. In fact, that is carnality. Just be yourself. Okay, do I have to act like a man? Eh? Do I have to act like a man? I am a man. Okay? So because I am a man, anyhow I act, I am a man. Even if I pretend to behave like a woman, it won't last. You will soon know that I am not a woman. Because it's my nature. My nature is the nature of a man. If I act like a dog, it's just for a while. I'll soon be tired. And when I get tired, my man, my man nature will start playing out. You know that that guy is not a dog. Because see, see, dogs don't behave like that. He's just pretending. Paralegis or my acting beside yourself you know i'm a man i'm born of the spirit my nature is holy spirit so when i'm a tobeli katoda it's my nature it's natural i don't have to act it that's who i am born of the spirit that which is born 
of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. So your nature is the Holy Spirit. The nature of the believer is the spirit of God. So you are not a sanguine. You are not a melancholy. You are not an introvert. You are not an extrovert. You are a believer. You are born of the spirit. You are a new creation. First John chapter 4 verse 17. As he is, so are we in this world. Is he a sanguine? No. So I cannot be a sanguine. First John 3, 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knows him not. So a psychologist cannot be labeling me a sanguine. He doesn't know me. Those who know me know I'm not a sanguine. They know I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new kind of humanity that never existed before. He's not a melancholy. He's not a sanguine. Now are we the sons of God. Now question. How are we the sons of God? First John 3 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. His seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. The word seed there is the Greek word sperma. And in the sperma is where you have sperm. Sperm is where you have DNA. You are born of the sperm of God. You are a product of God's sperma. A partaker of divine nature. A product of God's sperma. The spirit of God dwells in you. The life of God dwells in you. The spirit of God abides in you today. So, he is saying here, a new heart, a new spirit, my spirit. A new heart, a new spirit, my spirit. So Ezekiel 36 deals with the nature. And Jesus talks about the nature of course. You know we saw that in John 3, John 4, John 7, John chapter 3, John chapter 4, John chapter 7, John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16. Jesus deals with the nature of the believer at the point of salvation. The prophecy in Joel deals with ministry. Ezekiel deals with nature. Joel or Joel. Joel or Joel deals with ministry. Joel 2.28 It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy my spirit upon. The resultant effect of my spirit upon is they shall prophesy. They shall see visions. Why? My spirit upon. My spirit within. Will cause you to walk in my statues. A new heart. The spirit upon prophesy. So the spirit upon is ministry. The spirit within is nature. The two prophecies. Ezekiel and Joel. I will cause you to walk in my statues. Of course you know that prophecy means to simply bless other people. That is ministry. You will see visions. So whenever you read the word upon. Upon relates with ministry. That's why every believer ought to be in ministry. Every child of God ought to be a minister. Yeah. Every child of God. There's no place for floor members. Except you're not born again. Of course, you can be a floor member if you're not born again. You're just identifying with church so that you, they, don't, they won't say you're a Muslim or something. But if you're truly born of God, you have a ministry. Bible says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry of every believer. To preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So when you read the word upon, it relates with ministry. Within relates with your nature or your lifestyle. So God, number one, has changed our nature and given us a new lifestyle. He has changed our nature 
and giving us a new lifestyle by the indwelling of the spirit which makes us new creations number two he has also given us the ability to minister the ability to minister so the spirit within is the spirit upon you didn't hear that the spirit within is the spirit upon it's not two spirits you're not a monster is one spirit but within and upon the same spirit but within is function upon is function so one spirit two functions one function within nature the other function upon ministry by the same spirit is it clear please is it clear this is very important function function all right so the spirit within is a spirit upon but the word upon simply means that the spirit within can cause you to be a blessing to others to be a blessing to others just like jesus the spirit of the lord god is upon me isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3 look for 18 and 19 because he has anointed me to preach upon the spirit of the lord god is upon because he has anointed me to preach it deals with ministry that's why in the old covenant you have the spirit upon them the spirit kept coming upon them because the old testament the holy spirit functioned with them for ministry the spirit of god did not live inside them to give them a new nature none of them was born again so he came upon they did ministry and he left but in the new testament he is within and upon our nature is changed because we are new covenant believers and then we minister to be a blessing to others is it clear here yeah the spirit upon is ministry the spirit within is nature so in the old testament they have the nature of being children of god that's why they were servants none of them was born again the first person to be born again is jesus from resurrection it's called the first begotten from the dead the first begotten not the only begotten the first that is the prototokos the prototype the sample of others that will be born from the dead like him we were dead in sins and when we had the gospel we came alive born of god hallelujah i said hallelujah so let's go back they shall prophesy they shall see visions it deals with the gifts of the spirit the gifts of the spirit so in acts chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 put it up for me but when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting what will that look like in the prophecy Joel or Ezekiel? Joel, upon. Look at verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Ministry. It sat upon. That's Joel's prophecy. Upon. Look at verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So upon deals with ministry unto others or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2 verse 14 on that same day of Pentecost. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Next verse. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Third hour of the day means 9 a.m. Now this service started 6 a.m. And they were still tonguing from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Three hours of tonguing on the day of Pentecost. They were tonguing for three hours. Because the Jews went to the synagogue at 6. Peter said, we've been here. What you have seen us do, we are not drunk. Nobody can be drunk at the third hour, which is 9 a.m. Nobody can be drunk that early. So observe that from the beginning of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit, believers tongued for three hours. 
It was not a casual 15 minutes and you stop. No. These guys stung until they were drenched in it. They were soaked. And when you get to that place of tonguing for a while, you get saturated and the spiritual becomes easy. Spirituals become easy. Are we together here? Yeah. They were there for three hours. Three hours. Wow. Look at what Peter said in verse 16. Acts 2. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So you see, upon is what Joel spoke. Look at verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. How was Peter sure that what happened in Acts chapter 2 was Joel's prophecy fulfilled? Because Jesus taught them when he rose for 40 days. And he explained to them the prophecies and their fulfillment. So they were informed. They knew what was going to happen. And Peter relates Pentecost occurrence to Joel chapter 2. So upon is Joel chapter 2. And it's for ministry primarily. The gift of the spirit. Now look at Acts chapter 2 verse 4 again. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were underlined the word filled. Because we're examining being filled with the Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm. Who are the they? How many of them were there in Acts chapter 1. In Solomon's porch. 120. So how many of them spoke in tongues? 120 including Peter. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke in tongues. And this relates with Joel's prophecy. Now go to Acts chapter 4. Now before we read Acts chapter 4. The background is that these brethren were threatened. They were beaten by the government authorities. And they were warned not to preach in the name of Jesus. Alright. So look at Acts chapter 4 verse 22. After they have threatened them. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Alright? So they started praying. They lifted up their voice and they began to pray, including Peter and John. They were all part of the prayer. Now observe that Peter and John were in Acts chapter 2, where they were all filled with the Spirit. Now in Acts chapter 4, they are threatened, and they came back, and they were praying, and they lifted up their voices to God. Observe what will happen now. Acts chapter 4, verse 28. For to do whatsoever their hand and their counsel determined before to be done, part of the prayer. 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. 30. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled. Again. Filled the second time with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. In chapter 2, verse 4. They were filled. In chapter 4 verse 31. They were filled again. They were filled again. They were all filled again. In Acts chapter 4. So Peter in Acts 2 was filled. And in Acts 4 was filled. A definite experience with the Holy Ghost. Remember in Acts chapter 4 verse 5 and 7. Look at 4, 5, 7 and 8. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes. Give me verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked. By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Another one. Said unto them. You rulers of the people. So. The Holy Ghost filled Peter up 
So Peter now confronted them with the gospel. Fear left him. So they were filled in chapter 2. Peter was filled in chapter 4 verse 7, 8. And they were filled in chapter 4 verse 31. Filled, filled, filled. Are we teaching here? Filled, filled, filled with the Holy Ghost. Alright? Now, Acts 7, 54. When they heard these things, they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Stephen, 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up. Stephen was already filled before. But in this particular encounter, he was full of the Holy Ghost again. Look at Acts chapter 6 verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is no reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look at among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Why full of the Holy Ghost? I thought they were filled. Why should that be a requirement? So it is a requirement for anybody to serve in the church. He must be a person that is constantly full of the Holy Ghost. It's a requirement that the person that will serve in the church, in the body of Christ, must always be full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of the Holy Ghost therefore has evidences. Because for them to look for people that are full of the Holy Ghost means there are physical evidences. You will see in a man that is full of the spirit there are parameters to look for to be able to know if a man is full of the spirit or not that's why i say look out for men full of the holy ghost so it, it's not going to be by spiritual holding there are things to look out for in a person and we are going to see those things things that indicate a man is full of the spirit how you can easily tell when somebody is full of the spirit. It has symptoms. It's obvious. It's obvious. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, he is saying you will know it. Now look at brother Paul. Let's examine brother Paul. Acts 13 verse 2. As a minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Verse 3. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Look at verse 9. They sent them away by the Holy Ghost. So look at verse 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on Elemas. Set his eyes on that on that diabolical person set his eyes on that native doctor full of the holy ghost set his eyes on the sorcerer because the sorcerer opposed them so the holy ghost filled paul up and paul with the boldness of the spirit spoke to the sorcerer you know some people say well his name was saul then he had to change his name to paul because when you get born again, if your name is not a good name, you have to change your name. No, 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 no. You are not. You are just thinking. You are not teaching Bible. You are just thinking. Stop thinking. And if you don't know something, ask us. And don't, don't, don't assume. In Rome, his name is Paul. Among the Jews, his name is Saul. Do you understand? It's because he was with the Romans. And he was with the Jews. Roman people call him Paul. While Jewish people call him Saul. And he answered those two names all his lifetime. It's not like you drop one name for a new name. No. In Rome. Paul. Among the Jews in Jerusalem. Saul. That's why he said I'm a Roman of the Romans. And among the Jews I'm a Pharisee. As touching the law I killed the church. So he operated in both cultures and he was called two different names because of the two different cultures where he operated. He said, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He said, there's nothing any of them is doing that I didn't do better. 
but I count all of that as dung for the excellence of Christ Jesus. Are we together here? So it was not a change of name because he's born again. Those were his names before he got born again among the Jews and among the Romans. If that's clear, let me hear you say, I hear you. Look at Acts chapter 13 verse 9. Saul now is filled with the Holy Ghost. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, Saul, who also, not Saul, who changed his name to Paul, uh -uh. Saul, who also is called, so the two were his names. Is it clear? Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on them. Filled with the Holy Ghost. As we have seen, it is not a one-time experience. You don't get filled with the Holy Ghost one time. That's why Ephesians 5.18, which is our key scripture. And be not drunk with one wherein is excess, but be filled. That's an instruction. Be filled with the Spirit. We read Acts chapter 2, they were filled. Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Acts chapter 8, they were filled. Okay? Uh, Acts chapter 7, they were filled. Acts chapter 6, Stephen. Acts chapter 13, Paul. In all the things we read so far, did we see anywhere the Bible say, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost? Did we see any? Nothing like that. All we kept saying is, they were filled. He didn't say God filled them. They were filled. God didn't fill them. They were filled. You are not hearing me. I want you to hear because if you understand that, it will change everything. God didn't fill them with the spirit. May the spirit of the Lord come down. May the spirit of the Lord come down. Look at the, look at the tense. May. We are not even sure. May the spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. <laughs> so then what happened on the day of Pentecost? Songs in unbelief. Those songs are anti, anti Bible songs. The spirit came, he's been here, he's among us. He's with us, he's in us. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Alright, so they were filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. God didn't fill them. And Paul, being filled with the Spirit, spoke. Being full of the Spirit. If it's something that God does, Paul will not write and say, Be filled. Paul will have written and say, ask God to fill you. <laughs> Paul say, be filled. You, you, be filled. That means you can be filled whenever you want to. You can stand up now and be filled. And you can be filled three times in a day. It's within the confines of you wanting to be filled. It's not God. Please follow me. Be filled is an instruction. He didn't say God will fill you. Be filled. You be filled. So you determine whether you are filled with the spirit or not. It's you that determines it. That's why the qualification for a deacon is that he must be full of the spirit. That's why it's a qualification. That's why you can't be a deacon until you're full of the spirit because you are the one to be full of it. And if you refuse to be full, we refuse to make you a deacon. You didn't get that. It's not God that will fill you. Otherwise, it will not be a requirement for you to be a deacon. It is because you are the one to be filled. And if you refuse to be filled, we refuse to make you a deacon. Be filled is an instruction. Say with me, I will be filled. Yeah. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Hmm. Be filled. So you determine. He said the man must have honest report, character. Full of the spirit, something we can see. You'll be filled with the spirit. When you hear the word spirit, stop thinking of something mysterious or spooky. Spirit is who you are. Huh. 
Spirit is who you are. You are born of the spirit. Galatians 5.17 Walk in the spirit. You walk. You walk. God will not walk for you. You walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.16 Walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the deeds of the flesh. You shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. That means you can walk in the spirit. It's your responsibility to walk in the spirit. That means when it comes to the spirit, we have responsibility. In Galatians 5.22, he calls it the fruit of the spirit is love. It's one fruit. It's not plural. It's a fruit of the spirit. Love. And this love is the fruit of the spirit. Is the nature of the spirit. And this nature expresses itself in eight different ways. But it is one nature expressing itself in eight different ways. There's a fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit. In chapter 3 verse 2 of that Galatians. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? You received the spirit. So it is now your responsibility to walk in the spirit. Now listen carefully. You must desire the things of the spirit. You must desire the things of the spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 12 31. But covet earnestly. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. You are the one to covet. The word covet means to desire or to want it. Want it. You must want it. Okay. First Corinthians 14, 12. Even so ye, for as much as your zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. You are the one to to seek and in seeking it comes by zealousness so you are the one to be zealous you are the one to desire you are the one to to desire to be hungry for the spirit of god to manifest through you and bless people you are the one to desire you are the one to be zealous of spiritual things look at first corinthians 14 verse 1 follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts but rather that you may prophesy desire it the manifestation comes out of a burning desire burning desire you must want it you can desire it you can walk in it you can want it look at first timothy 4 14 brother paul speaking to timothy on the spirituals neglect not the gift that is in thee neglect not which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the elders presbytery neglect not the gift look at second timothy 1 6 wherefore i put thee in remembrance that thou steer up the gift you are the one to steer all these are your responsibilities steer up the gift of god which is in thee by the putting on of my hands so you can steer up the gift of God. The word says steer. That word steer up in the Greek means fan into flames. Fan the gift into flames. Be aglow. Be on fire. Not the fire for killing people. Be on fire for ministry. Be aglow. Let the zeal of seeing people's healed seeing the word of god break forth seeing sin as safe let that zeal consume you completely so that even when you sleep you are evangelizing in the dream not you sleep they are pursuing you you are thinking on the wrong things be so passionate about working for god that in your dream you are on one crusade where 10 million people are gathered you dream preaching and wake up preaching you dream raising the dead, commanding cripples to walk. You wake up to see that it was a dream. Let it enter you so much so that dream and physical is no more different. It becomes your world of reality. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah, be, 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 
Like Jesus to say, the zeal of my father's house has eaten me up. You don't have time for anything else. Your passion is to see God's glory manifest through you. You're so saturated. So saturated. Passionate. On fire. A glow. All of you is glowing. When you move, you are like a glowing bulb. If you enter where there's darkness, you're the only light standing. Zabadaga. Keledo bush. When there's light in darkness, you see ants flying to the light. When you move where there's darkness, human beings begin to come to you. Bible says they shall come to the brightness of your rising. Yeah, I'm feeling this thing all over this place. Jacota Ladaba. Be a glow. Be on fire. Be on fire. Young men on fire. Women on fire. Men on fire. Youth on fire. Everybody aglow. There is a manifestation of God we are going to see as we enter this new year. Manifest. Some of you can swim in this dimension now because we have taken quality time to build doctrine into you. We have taken time to lay solid doctrinal foundation so that when you begin to function in the supernatural you have a foundation zapata the reason why there was nonsense in Corinth is because there was no doctrinal building they just entered the gifts of the spirit it's very dangerous we don't build ministry on the gifts of the spirit we build ministry on the word the gifts of the spirit only comes to minister to people on the doctrine that has been established am i communicating at all yeah very important very important be a glow. Be on fire. All the time you are just thinking of who to get saved. You are thinking of where somebody is sick. So you can enter there. You know that thing you carry something. You are looking for where to display it. You are just looking for where people are. So that you can take Rise up and walk. Sick body be healed. You are not afraid. You are not scared. You know what you carry created the universe. You know what you carry raised Christ from the dead. You know what you carry dead cannot defy it. If you're hearing me shout, I'm on fire. Zapotakaya. On fire for ministry. On fire for ministry. You can desire, you can walk, you can steer up the gifts of God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Why will you? Because God has given us his spirit. His spirit dwells in us. His spirit is our nature. And that nature leads to our ability. Because the spirit of God is our nature, we can be filled. We can yield. We can walk. We can steer up. That's our nature. We do it naturally. We steer up when we need to steer up. We walk in the spirit when there is need to walk in it. Yeah. It's in us. That's who we are. We can walk into a place in five minutes we have changed the whole atmosphere. Why? We have steered up ourselves. And what we have is pouring out. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah, you can walk into anywhere and change the atmosphere. Anywhere. Anywhere. You don't need praise and worship to change an atmosphere. You yourself, you're an atmosphere changer. You walk into anywhere. Two minutes of talking, you have changed the whole... Uh, am I talking to somebody? Karatabash. Subalataya. Mato Lady Why are you looking at me like that? Kabodagas. Holodobon. Zibarakatana. It's a new day. Zakoladaba. Say with me, the spirit of God is my nature. Say it like you know what you're talking about. Say it again. He gives me ability to do all that God said I should do. See, is our nature. So the spirit of God within us is our salvation and the new birth within us. And the spirit of God upon us is our ministry which we received at new birth, our ministry. So now being filled with the spirit relates with both the spirit within and the spirit upon. There's no believer that cannot walk in love. There's no believer that cannot walk in forgiveness. And there's no believer that cannot walk in self-control. 
There's no believer that cannot be filled with the spirit anytime he wants to be filled. Once you want it, you are filled. <laughs> Once you want it. So being filled with the spirit, just like walking in the spirit, is our responsibility. Being filled, just like walking in the spirit, is our responsibility. The spirit upon ministry. The spirit within my nature. Say, I have the spirit upon me. Speak like you know what you're talking about. Say, the spirit of God is upon me now. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Joel. And now you are the recipient of the fulfillment of that prophecy. The spirit is upon you. You can prophesy. Say with me, I can prophesy. Say with me, I see visions. Say, I can manifest and demonstrate the glory of God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Did you observe that the very first time in the new covenant we see the word being filled with the spirit is in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Law of first mention. Law of first mention. The spirit upon is a permanent on every Christian. Every believer has tongues as of fire upon him. As of fire. Metaphor. Began to speak with other tongues. They began the spirit life experience. They began the spirit filled life experience. The day they began to speak in tongues was the day they began the spirit filled life experience. The spirit-filled life experience. And if you begin something, you must continue in it. And that was the very first time we see people baptized with the Holy Ghost in the New Testament era. And it was accompanied with tongues. Every time they were filled, they spoke. Every time they were filled, they spoke. Being filled with the Spirit is not tongues. Tongues is one of those experiences. It's not all of it. But a primary one for a New Testament experience of being filled with the Spirit. Tongues is primary, is fundamental. But it is not limited to tongues alone. So speaking with other tongues is not a special thing for a selected people. It's a sign for all believers. This sign shall follow those that believe. In my name, in my authority, in my resurrection, he shall speak with new tongues. Say, I speak in tongues. Say it again. Say, because I'm born of the Spirit. Say again, I speak in tongues. Because I am born of the Spirit. Say, I can be filled with the Spirit. Anytime. I steer up myself. And I am full of the Spirit. I didn't hear powerful amen. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you in this hour. Let's pray in the spirit for a few seconds. Everybody, let's just flow. Let's just blow. Let's just blow in the spirit for a few minutes tonight. Me bro da zokolo do bro na katonga le de boro koto saka le gra da zokolo do bri na katonga gali de bajoko koroto sakali na manga garida garida garato kalina manaka radiga galada baroko to sika la nama le ngro do zokolo do bri na katoli de baba le gro to saka baraka to na kule ne meniga na gadono no goluda ba baraka ege bo jakaya ege bo jakaya I want you to I, I want you to steer up yourself I want you to be full of zeal full of zeal grab somebody by you grab somebody by you and just minister to somebody we have another one minute two minutes everybody minister to somebody lego shaka yadaba lego shaka bayada let's just flow let's just flow you're watching online you're watching on television you're listening on radio go ahead open your mouth let that prayer language flow out of you lego so parakatana if you're sick begin to receive healing if you're sick begin to receive healing if you're bound be free 
lago sopere ketina kata egeba jacole de bala la broda zekele de bambronga dangle de bozoto le de be le grodo socolo de babra gada sakele de bayana egeba jocolo de bara rakoto belida baraka tanaka engebo zakala 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 agamo egeba jakaya nakala nogara dosaka egeba jocolo egera nagaza bereke tekela hey shakala nama mombronda zokolo de bere rakotobe 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 angebo sota la daba Hey, Jaco, 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 stop yourself. Rato beleka tona gaga. Langronda sombrena, nangra, nangra, nangra. Egelerebo, jabara kato belede, marando bolodobo sataya. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that your word rules in our hearts. All over this place, the manifestation of your glory as the water covers the sea. Your people walking in power. Your people walking in glory. Your people walking in signs and wonders. Your people walking in manifestation. Your people walking in glory and grace. In the name of Jesus, sick bodies be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Tumors dry up. Tumors melt out. Paralysis flushed out. Kayato meliat. Where you need creative miracles, receive creative miracles. In the name of Jesus. Zabadola tabas. Meyotola baha. Ratobilata. Zibonanga daga. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name. Can I hear that amen on a note of finality? Now grab your offerings. Let's pray as we give, Father. Thank you for the privilege to give. We give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we rejoice that both we and our resources are committed to the advancing of your kingdom. And I pray for everybody giving. Your needs are met according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. Thank you Father for answer prayer. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says that amen like thunder. Hey guys I'm joining Mr. Michael Bush. You don't want to move your set. You want to stay with us. We're going to be answering your calls. Responding to your mails. And interacting with you. We love you till I see you at the other side of the studio. You know in the next few seconds. And until then enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world. For being a part of this service. Glory. Amen.